Hey, John. Hey, good morning. How are you doing? I'm actually doing okay. The that's weather good. here in California is heating up, so uh, that's good and bad. <laughs> yes. Right. Hey, David. Hello. Good morning. Morning. Uh, Ray, are you there? Yep. Good morning. Good morning. Tommy. Hey. Hello. Morning, Ginger. Oh, good morning, Doug. Sorry. Right. That's good. And Falco. Hi. Hello. Right. Hey, Lance. Good morning or afternoon, depending on where you are. <laughs> yeah, it's lunchtime, that's for sure. Hey, Doug. Hey, Mark. Let's see who else joined in here. Hamid, are you there? 
Yes, I'm here. Hello. Um, Klaus. Yes, I'm here. Hello. And Mike. Morning. Morning. And Scott. Uh, no, no, no. Hello. And Timur. Hello, how are you? Hello, good. And well. Hey, thanks. Uh, hello. Matthias. Matthias, you there? Okay, I think I got everybody else. How's everybody doing today? I'm not sure still yet. Alive. Yeah, <laughs> still alive. <laughs> alive and not sure yet. Okay. <laughs> not the most optimistic answers, but it's better than the opposite, I guess. This call needs to be on like Tuesday. Maybe Tuesday would be more positive. Uh, maybe. Uh, but imagine the pressure then to actually get something done over the weekend. At least now you can kind of try to stretch it out during the week. Feel guilty about it, but stretch it out. Hmm. Ryan, are you there? I am. Hello. Hello. Matthias or Matthias, are you there yet? Francesco, you there? Hello, everybody. Hello. All right, one more minute, then we get started. Oh, Eric, I missed you. Good morning. Good morning. All right, three after, let's get this show on the road. All right, uh, community time. Anything from the community people would like to bring up? All right, I'm not hearing anything. So <laughs> this is kind of funny. Um, I can't remember if it was last week or during this week. Yeah. Uh, we found out from... Oh, Vinay, you want to go on mute? Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. I got you on the, in the uh, 10 eight list now, too. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So I got a message from Liz, who's the TOC chair. And apparently the TOC would actually prefer that we not become a working group under SIG app delivery. They would actually prefer we become our own SIG. And so they're trying to set up a special time for us to have a conversation to see if we can get the right scoping to make that happen. Um, so we're looking for a, a time when, uh, when we can all chat. Um, don't know where it's gonna go, but I just thought I'd let you guys know that that's the current status of things. Just kind of interesting. I mean, I, on the one hand, it's actually like it's kind of nice that they think that um, our area is uh, important enough to warrant its own SIG, which I guess is good, but that also then probably means lots of extra bureaucracy for, uh, for us. So good and bad points. Anyway, just thought I'd mention that. All right. so. Technically, we do not have an SDK call scheduled for this week. However, given that people have done things like added SDK type topics to our agenda, there's a lot of chatter going around around some relatively um, significant topics, at least my opinion, they're significant in the SDK Slack channel and issues. I'm wondering whether we should switch back to having it every week for a while. What do people think, in particular the SDK folks? Not starting from this week. Oh no, no, not this week. I think it's too soon. It'd be, it'd be un, that'd be unfair to the people who 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 missed out on this call. So okay. starting next week, should we switch to every week for a little while? Okay. What do I'd people think? Of the engagement. Say it again. I, I I would be glad to have that regular engagement since you know okay. um, there's a lot of activity. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and that, that way people don't feel like they need to add SDK topics to this call because this call is typically not about SDK work other than just a status. But if we have extra time, then I'm okay to talk about it. So tell you what, if there's no objection, I will send out a note um, to that effect. Um,
and we'll start that next week, okay? I just don't want everybody to have to wait two weeks for some hot topics. All right, update on the workflow stuff. Timur, you wanna mention what's going on there? Uh, what's going on is we do have a meeting just with the Argo team, uh, I think Monday the 11th. So we're gonna start, I guess, our kind of hopefully talks with them about a possible integration and, and see how that goes. Um, <laughs> and yeah, that's it. We, we did have a, our monthly meeting and it went well and we're just chugging on things. But yeah, so the next step is the, the, the talk with the Argo team. And I, actually it's funny, I know it's not to this meeting, but I did have a question about the Java SDK deployment on Maven repositories, but they might not be part of this. Um, maybe later if there is time. Yeah, I was gonna say, let, let's save that for later if there is time. All right, cool. Thank you. Any questions about the workflow stuff? All right, in that case, Clemens could not make the call today. Apparently, Microsoft gave them today and tomorrow off. Lucky them. However, we did on last week's call talk about bringing up uh, his proposal for a new sub working group. And this, to be clear, this would be under the cloud events banner, not serverless. Um, he wants a little subgroup here to work on this. Um, I guess that's about it. I don't, I don't think I need to repeat everything they said there. Does anybody have any questions, comments, anything about this? Okay. Even though he's not on the call. Oh, I'm sorry, Ryan, did you wanna say something? Um, I mean, I, I think this just needs to be answered. Um, I, I agree with this and I think we should explore it as a, as a, as a subgroup, but um, scoping and, and how it um, how it relates to the the discovery work is my big question. Okay, but it sounds like you think that's something that could be worked out once we go past the initial decision of yes, we're going to do something. Yeah, I think so. Okay, cool. Okay. So, any other questions or comments? Because if not, I'm going to ask if there's any disagreement to approving this as a sub work group. Okay, not hearing any questions or comments. Let me formally ask the I mean, question. I, I, I had a similar comment to the question that was asked is that like, it, these are the kind of things that we tried to, to take on in discovery. So like, let's make sure that we join in with that work, like that it's not totally off to the side. Yeah, I, I have no, I, I can't speak for Clemens, but I can't imagine he would want it to be completely disjoint. Yeah. Okay. All right. In that case, let me formally ask the question, is there any objection to approving this as a new subgroup under cloud events? All right, not hearing anything. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Clemens will be thrilled. All right, and so we'll, I'll work with Clemens offline to talk about the structure of how this works. For example, uh, will he want uh, to try to squeeze time into this call? Do we want to set up a separate call? a directory a structure or repo structure, those kind of things, you know, um, process type stuff. We'll talk offline about that as necessary. And we'll bring that back to the group before any decision is made. All right. Okay, let's talk about issues in PR now, in PRs now. Sorry, sorry Doug, I have, I have one more comment on that. Yes. Um, like we, it, it feels like we started the discovery subgroup or the, the, the discovery work um, as well as the subscription work and it feels like we haven't made like meaningful progress on like those as a whole. So I, I guess my my other question is um, like should we should we make sure we focus on one thing um, and and not <laughs> and not make you know slightly incremental progress on things, uh, but yeah. not getting anything done? Yeah, I, actually, it's funny you mentioned that because I actually did talk to Clemens slightly about this before when he first proposed this. I said you know. I don't necessarily have a problem with this concept. I just fear that it's going to slow down the other work that we have going on. And he didn't seem to think it would. Obviously, that's just his opinion, though. Um, I, I have a feeling this is not something that we can necessarily fix up front. I think we have to see how it plays out. And I think your initial comment there about things appearing to slow down on the two new specs is definitely true. And I've definitely been concerned about this, which is why I've been trying to open up issues here uh, the last 
you know, today to try to force some discussions to happen and in particular then hopefully force some PRs to happen. Um, I don't know whether it's because people are losing interest, people are just busy. I don't know what the reason is. I'm looking, I would love it if someone wanted to chime in and speak up in terms of what their thought process is and either why things seem to be going slow or ideas on how to speed things back up. I think this is a good topic though. So thank you, Ryan, for mentioning it. Sure. Anybody want to yeah, jump and, in? And it's like, I don't have a specific concern. It's more just an observation, anything. Yep, well, you're not alone. Mark, did you want to jump in there? No, she came off mute. Well, you asked a specific question that wasn't relevant to my comment, but I'll, I'll just throw it out, which is that uh, people should comment, make all of these comments into the proposal that, uh, uh, what is it, issue 610? Clements thing? Yeah, so that yeah. Clement, Clements can uh, see, see your concerns. Yep, definitely true too. Okay. Does anybody want to comment in general about the appearance of us uh, slowing down on the new specs? Oh man, you guys are going to make me pick on somebody at some point. I don't want to do that. Perhaps focusing seems like a good idea. Uh, can you elaborate on what you mean by focusing? Uh, what well, was just recommended that we would choose one and uh, focus on it for a bit, uh, so that our attentions aren't diverted or uh, bisected. I, th I think it would, be, it would be reasonable to make a push to actually implement a reference of the discovery and subscription APIs. That would help force some issues. True. Okay. I mean, <clears throat> until somebody actually uses this, we may have created garbage. <laughs> Okay, hold on a minute, just taking some notes here. Of course I can't type. Is anybody actually thinking about doing an implementation? I think so. Is that something that you were thinking about doing relatively soon, or is it just in the back of your mind? No, I mean, I, I, I mean, if, if we have an, uh, if we have a proposal for a spec, I think we should definitely have an implementation. I mean, a, a, a reference implementation, not not something that should be maybe used as a as a production ready. Uh, as a production ready implementation, but at least something that people can look at when they will start implementing the, the spec. Mm -hmm. I mean, that makes sense for, for people. I, I be, think so. Also, yeah. to be sure, also to be sure that the spec is implementable. No, yeah, I, I think that's, that's <laughs> true. I mean, we did, this, we did something similar with cloud events, right? That's some of the reason behind the demos. That's some of the reason behind the SDK work, right? It's, a, it's to force implementation and get real world experience with it. So, Jem, your hands up. Yeah, I mean, I was just going to, my understanding of your original question was, though, um, building an implementation to see if the spec makes sense. Rather, yeah, I agree there should be a reference implementation in the future, but I think the first step is to try and implement what people are designing, almost like a code. I don't want to say code first rather than spec first, but it seemed to be that sort of approach rather than coming at it from a reference implementation perspective. Maybe I mis misinterpreted. I, th uh, I suspect Mike's comment was just get some code out there, whether you want to call it reference implementation or just a proof of concept, just to prove that the thing can actually work. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you look at what I did with the, with the GraphQL, like I wasn't convinced that that was going to work, so I implemented it as I went. Yeah. So, <sighs> Scott, your hands up. Yeah, I was just going to say that uh, in the the effort of developing the SDKs for the original cloud event spec, we found a lot of questions and holes in the spec that made the spec better. So if we're serious about the, these, these two new specs, we should definitely make a reference implementation. At this point in time, is there anybody willing to raise their hand 
to say that they would be interested in it, at least in the short term. I know long term, I'm sure people will, will probably come on board later. But I'm just wondering if it's something that we can get started now on, or is it too soon? People too busy? Interested in the implementation or in the stack? Well, <laughs> I'm, assuming, <laughs> I'm assuming or hoping that everybody on this call is interested in the spec. I was thinking more about the implementation. Okay. So no one has time right now. That's interesting. I am definitely interested, but time is the, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the problem, right? Time, time. Okay. Um, so I'm looking for ideas on how to try to address this issue, right? Like I said, I tried to open up a whole bunch of issues today to try to force some discussion on stuff. I'm hoping that some of those discussions will pan out to more activity. Do, does anybody else have any other ideas? Because I'm stumped here, to be honest. I mean, unless we guys want to just give it a little more time and see you know, whether the new issues help, whether someone will magically find time to start doing implementation work. Obviously, we can't strong arm people into doing stuff. This is like open source, right? But I, I think this comes back to the focus issue. Yeah, there seems to be a lot of you know, I, you could even argue could split discovery and subscription. Yeah. Um, and maybe it's just the size of those, those things that are difficult for people to digest if they're not intimately involved with it, if that makes sense. So, so if, if we as a group could say, we'll do, discovery, then we'll do subscription, then we'll do, um, you know, schema management or whatever. Um, I think people might then be able to align around that. So, okay, just, just my thought process on that, because I, <clears throat> in general, Jim, what you said makes sense. However, given that I don't see any real activity on either specification, it's hard for me to claim that it's because people's time is, is split between two. Point taken. That, I, and I would, I would, I would, you know, say that I haven't really had the opportunity, or you know, to sit down and, and really sort of try and digest everything. So I'm, from a personal perspective, I'm relying on these calls, which isn't, which isn't the right place, obviously. Right. So let me what? ask. Go ahead. Go ahead, Lance. Oh, sorry, Doug. This is Ryan. Um, oh, Ryan, sorry. Uh, yeah, what, what, just one thing looking back, it, it felt like we made a lot of progress when we had actual working subgroups dedicated to these issues. And then once we pulled them back up, um, you know, we merged those pull requests and then the, the activity sort of died off. So I wonder if just, um, you know, uh, not, not strong arming, but assigning responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> would, would be helpful. Okay, I have a comment about that, but Lance, you wanna, your hands up next? Yeah, I mean, I don't know how much longer I can keep saying I'm, I'm new to the group and, and, <laughs> and have that be an excuse for not do, doing a whole lot. Uh, but that's part of it, you know, not, not being willing to, at least for myself, you know, just that data point, um, not being confident to jump in really deep in lots of different things. Uh, so early in my tenure here. Um, and then um, also, I'm just super busy. I think these are things, both the subscription and the discovery are things that I will down the road really care about and need to have, but I'm just not able to commit time to them right now because I'm building all the things that lead up to that. Yeah. Well, I noticed you haven't been shy in the SDK work, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so, okay. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Francesco. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Ed Clements already something where he wants to start from. I mean, there's already something, some ground to start this work or it's, it's all from scratch. I'm sorry, you're asking about Clemens' proposal, right? Yes, about Clemens' proposal in specific. Yeah, I, I do not know if they have a specification written up. Uh, we'd have to wait for him to come back to know. 
but I, I, to be honest, I'm, la I'm not as concerned about that right now. I'm more concerned about the slowness of our two specs in front of us. And Ryan, your comment about things making progress when, this, when we had subgroups, I, I do agree with you. Uh, my, my concern with, with sort of punting it to a subgroup is it feels a little bit, and maybe I'm, I shouldn't be speaking for Mike and Clemens, but it seems a little bit unfair. Um, because I, I felt like we basically had two people doing all the work. And I know that's not necessarily 100% true because there were other t people who were joining phone calls and stuff, but I just got the sense that it was all put on one person's shoulders. And, and that doesn't seem quite right. We're, we're supposed to be a group here trying to push this thing forward. But Mike, did, am, I, am I misinterpreting what I kind of saw? There's a reason I'm not volunteering to do another implementation. Yeah, <laughs> right. And, I, and like I said, I, I don't think it'd be fair to ask you, right? That's one of the reasons that you, you took this on to get the initial draft out there, but then it was supposed to be handed over to the rest of the group to work on. That way it would not be all on your shoulders. Yeah, so, I think that's fair, and I don't think subgroups are, are the solution. It's just we're just an observation that when we had folks dedicated to it, it did make progress. So, yeah, and 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 to be honest, that's part of the reason why I was opening up some issues because because if someone saw a smallish issue out there, they may then jump up and say, "Hey, I will take that small issue." <clears throat> right. So, for example, Lance was saying he's new. He's maybe <clears throat> excuse me, a little uncomfortable trying to jump in there, but maybe one of those issues is small enough, he can say, I'll take a stab at some new wording for that, right? And that way we have concrete owners and I can nag that particular person and it gives you that, <clears throat> that, 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 that feel of a small dedicated work group just on an issue by issue basis as opposed to on a spec basis, right? So I'm not hearing any, any real significant suggestion here in terms of how to fix this problem. So I'm inclined to say, keep on the path we're on right now and ask people to please open up issues, even for things that you think are silly, just to force some discussions. Because like I said in another call, I actually think that's what happened with cloud events. We had a whole bunch of issues out there. Some of them were, in my opinion, really silly in nature and just flat out wrong. But <clears throat> in nothing else, it forced a discussion because we need to get rid of the backlog of issues. And that forced us to have a discussion about that particular topic, even if it was to reject the idea. And that got some discussions going and it made people think about other things to, to change in the spec. So I guess at this point, all I could do is ask for people to please take some kind of action. It doesn't have to be a full-fledged PR. It could just be, hey, how is this thing gonna be handled and open an issue? Does that seem okay? I mean, I don't, I, I don't know what else to do. David, did you want to say something? No, no that, that seems reasonable. It's uh, from, uh, from our perspective, in terms of where I'm at currently in terms of my internal group, uh, we've had some recent product changes that slowed a lot of things down. Um, so I'm trying to reevaluate what this project is doing with some other projects that are going on. Uh, separate, but I'm trying to see if there's actually a connection and that's with open telemetry. So um, I'm going to be taking more time looking at the spec and looking at the issues. It's just going to take me a little bit more time to get caught up again because I've been out of touch for a little while. Okay. All right. Well, until someone has a concrete, actionable thing for us to take with a, with a proposal for it, I have a feeling we're kind of stuck in this see how it plays out mode. So, okay, let's move on to something a little more concrete and possibly actionable. If my computer wakes up, come on. Can you guys see the spinning thing? <laughs> there we go. All right. I was hoping this would be an easy one to get behind us. So Fabio opened up a PR to change the Avro schema. I believe this is their schema, right? Um, just to rename it from cloud events to Avro cloud events. This seemed like a no brainer to me, but I know nothing about Avro. So I don't know what their schema docs are normally like. Does anybody on the call have any comment about whether this is a bad thing to do or a, or a non-normal thing to do? It's so long since I looked at Avro. I mean, it, this looks non-backwards compatible, isn't it? Changing the names of things. Right, and my my comment would be uh, similar to that, but also if it's already Avro, putting Avro Cloud event seems like a bit redundant. Okay. 
the uh, members just of Venay. Just opinion again, without knowing too much context. So I just want to throw it out there. Okay, uh, Vinay, were you going to say something? Yeah, can I make a comment? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, also, it seems like we're not necessarily changing the field name. It's just the, uh, and, and I don't understand the implication of it, but it kind of at the outset seems a little benign, but I don't know about backwards compatibility. Yeah, the, yeah that's the one I was going to ask about. These fields that are changed, are they simply descriptive things or are they actual like schema things that's going to break running code? Exactly. Well, well said. <laughs> if, if your code relied on that name, then regardless of whether it's descriptive or not, it will break it. So, Right, but, does, but yes. does, would this word right here appear like on the wire? I don't know. Does anybody know? Well, I would imagine it would, uh, right, Doug? I mean, it would be marshaled. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what that field. Bad. I don't know anything about Avro. That's why I'm asking. I believe I believe Avro doesn't allow you to rename fields in a backward compatible way. But I would have to go double check the documentation. Okay. Well, it sounds like there's enough possibility of things of this being a back a a breaking change that I'll take the action item to ping Fabio and ask him about that since I'm assuming he's an Avro expert. And if he comes back and says yes, it's a breaking change, then we need to really think hard about whether we want to do it because that's not good, <laughs> put it that way. So well, the, the, there is a similar breaking change uh, with changing the namespace in another issue. No, always, we, always in the Avro schema. I, I saw that today uh, in the pull requests. Uh, in, hold on. Yeah, uh, uh, this one? 613, yeah. I mean, uh, this one tries to change the, uh, the, the, the one where you ping me. This one tries to change namespace. I have no, I have no idea how Avro works. To me, it looks correct, but uh, other than that. Okay. Well, this one was a work in progress. That's why I didn't put it on the agenda. Oh, um, yeah, of, of course, but I mean, yeah. this is a, uh, we need to make sure this is not a breaking change too. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I thank you for mentioning that. I'll ask on both those issues then. Thank you. Uh, where was I? Shh. Okay. What was the other one? That was 615. Okay. Can do. Thank you, everybody. All right. Let's see about this issue or PR. Okay, so apparently this this having null here breaks, I could think tooling is what, this is Thomas, right? Yeah, Thomas was saying that this will break um, some tooling and so he just wants to remove it. I'm assuming no one cares, this is all part of the new spec and it, everything's gonna change anyway over time. But anybody have any problem with this? Okay, once he uh, signed his commit, we will get that one merged if there's no objection. I'll fix that. All right, distributed tracing. Um, Francesco, do you want to talk about this one today or do you want to, um, actually, or do you, or because there was activity recently, or do you want to continue having these discussions um, I, offline or, or do you want to try to force a discussion today in the call? I feel there is there isn't something else to talk about. Okay. I mean, I, I, um, uh, Ian is not there. I think. I don't see him now. But I mean, he's proposing to change the behavior of the spec, while my PR is not changing the behavior. It's just trying to reward and make clear what what's the goal of the the extension. Right. And I feel like, and I, well, I said this in my comment yesterday. I feel like if he wants to to make the kind of change that he really wants, which I think is to make more of a full-fledged tracing kind of spec within the cloud event space, I think that warrants a separate discussion and separate proposal. Agree. So what I'd like to do is ask on this, for the people on the call right now, um, given the current set of changes here, I think for the most part, you haven't really changed anything over the last couple of weeks, right? I think I had a minor syntax thing last night, but that's minor. Yes. Right. Okay. 
what do people think on the call right now? Um, does anybody have any concern with merging this? Does anybody think it goes backwards in terms of clarity? Because we're not looking for perfection here. This is just a proposed extension. We're just looking for whether it moves the ball forward, you know, make it better than it was before. Okay, so no one seems to think it's a horrible move. It is, let me ask formally then, is there any objection then to approving this modulo the, the syntax errors that I noticed last night? I already noticed that. There you go. Okay, never mind. I didn't notice that. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna we're gonna merge it then. Unless anybody someone speaks up real quick. Okay, thank you everybody. Whoops. All right. Um, what about the next one, multi-part? Do you want to hold off till Clemens comes back or do you want to have a discussion now? Uh, let's hold off because <laughs> again, I didn't have time for this. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, I know he has some, uh, some opinions on this one. Okay. Um, so this one, I apologize, probably should have removed this one because we talked about this one last week. So I don't think there's anything new there to talk about. I apologize, I should have cleaned that up. GraphQL. Mike, do you want to talk about this one today or would you like to hold off? Um, I don't have anything prepared to talk about. I mean, what would folks like to talk about? Okay, well, it seems to me that at some point we need to come to a decision. And I know that there was, okay. I know there, that there are plenty of people who say that GraphQL is nice and they like it. Um, however, I think the last time we talked about this, and this is, I'm, I'm, I think I'm probably very biased, so any, please someone jump in and correct me, but my general take of the, most of the conversations we had up till date were, yes, GraphQL is nice, but we should probably still support a, a simplified REST API that does not require something like GraphQL, but, that, but we can do a GraphQL as an optional layer on top of it. That's my interpretation anyway, what previous conversations were like. But like I said, I'm probably very, very biased. Does anybody want to chime in? No, I mean, that seems to be the sentiment. I, I would not be in favor of supporting two versions of the API. Um, we will get drift and we will get incompatibilities and people will be unhappy. Okay. Does, uh, I don't think we can necessarily resolve this on the call today if we do to make the decision, but I'm curious. Does anybody on the call think that we should only support GraphQL? Okay, Jim, you had your hand up there for a minute. Do you want to chime in or? No, I mean, I'm a fan of GraphQL. I mean, I, I wonder, I understand the concern with, with drift um, of resource or entity models or whatever you want to call them. Um, but I wonder if you can address that with, you know, having common representations that, you know, are managed together so that, you know, that's certainly something we're starting to do, um, have common models that, that are updated together. Um, I like the idea of GraphQL as, a, as an endpoint because I think it, you know, it's gaining such traction these days. It's not like you're not like it's a new technology anymore. Um, so yeah, I, I would, I would say we should have both. Okay. Anybody else want to chime in? I think the, I think we, this is revisiting this topic and, um, uh, it is my, my only concern is from what reading I have done, it seems a more efficient, uh, manner to access data, etc. but it's the interoperability and, uh, being using REST for, I don't know, let's say a decade or so, and how the implications on interoperability. That's my only concern. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Ryan, your hands up. Yeah, I, I, I think I've provided this feedback before, but to, to me, um, like the success for this whole thing is adoption. Um, and so I, I just question how widely supported and adopted is GraphQL across vendors across companies, across systems. Um, that, and that, that's really the question for me. It's like, I, I like GraphQL I, my, myself, but um, is it 
is it something that's going to help or hinder adoption? All right, thank you. Anybody else want to chime in? Okay, I think, oh, where's my cursor go? Okay. Uh, yeah, sorry, go ahead. So just my two cents, uh, I, I just wanted to mention that GraphQL is pretty kind of dumb specification actually, uh, if not talking about uh, the HTTP binding and so on and so forth. Um, and adding support for it doesn't require a complex SDK or anything. So I guess we are talking about very lightweight specification that's very easy to add support um, of, and there's nothing to be afraid of, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I am. I'm definitely hearing that consistent theme that it is relatively lightweight and it's not a huge. It's not a huge burden. Um, and forgive me for trying to put words in people's mouths. I think what we're hearing though is, it is more of a burden than say just vanilla REST is what I'm hearing. And there's a concern that people have expressed that um, in the, if, we're, if we're looking for as wide adoptability as we can, uh, REST might be the more appropriate choice. But Jim? I, the, all that happens is the burden gets moved around. Yeah, because if you, um, with the sort of query semantics, uh, that's where, you know, if you're trying to do queries on, on a RESTful interface, that can become very messy. Um, and just GraphQL simplifies that aspect of it, but then it pushes you know, the complexity into the server, yeah? Um, but you're gonna have that complexity for trying to decode RESTful-based queries as well. So I, I see them as complementary, um, but I agree agree there's a danger of sort of um, creating two solutions to the same space. Uh, and, and again, I think we come back to that until you have clients that want to integrate against these things and, and see what the use cases are. That's when it may become more obvious, which is a more um, viable option. Okay. <clears throat> Having implemented the GraphQL one, like I found the, the tooling support for implementing GraphQL servers is in just about every language you could want. Super easy to use. Like, like I, I went from knowing nothing about GraphQL to having it fully working end to end in about four hours. It's, it's not a big burden. So yeah, I would agree. I mean, it, it, I think it all comes down to the information model that you're trying to query on this now i mean that i think is part of is that part of the sticking point with this is just trying to agree the the model that we're trying to query on whether it's a graphql model or a, or a restful implementation i mean the, the the data i think is clearly like lends itself to a graph model um you know i also contorted rest to make it convey the same information <laughs> so okay so to me the most, the most interesting bit of information that I have running through my head right now is when I asked if anybody thinks we should only support GraphQL, no one spoke up. And that to me says that we don't necessarily have to make a final decision right now, but we need to make a, at least a short-term decision on how to move forward. And it seems to me that the, the, the decision or the, the question before the group or the proposal before the group would be, for right now, design a RESTful API to get something going, going up and running as quickly as possible, and then revisit this issue again at some later point in time to see if, now that we have an experience with the REST API, is it too complicated and would a GraphQL be easier? Or is it simple enough and that's fine? Or do we want the GraphQL to be an additional layer on top of it? You know, we don't necessarily, my point is we don't have to make the decision right now, but we have to move forward with what is the preferred or, or pr premier API that we're gonna expose. And the fact that no one said Re Q Re GraphQL should be the only one we, we support, I think the, the proposal then has to be start with REST and then revisit this later. Am I being too biased here? I mean, if I had to pick one, I would probably pick GraphQL as the only implementation, but I don't think that's gonna be a winning uh, arguments given given the status of the group right now. Yeah. 
So I guess I, I, I guess the reason I didn't speak up is I know I know when to not fight a minority position. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering why you didn't speak up, but I agree with you. I probably would have kept quiet as well because I heard enough people say or express concern that yeah. Okay, so let me let me make it a little more formal. It, so I guess the proposal is to start out with the the REST API and then revisit this issue at some point in the future. We can change our mind, but we would definitely revisit it before the spec goes 1.0. Because before anything hits 1.0, we can change anything and everything, including dropping rest if we wanted. Uh, Jim, your hands up. Yeah, I would hate to abandon this. I, if that's what I'm, if that's the subtext here. I mean, I mean, no. So I think we should keep this alive, and I, and I would hope we can at some point get to a model where you know the endpoint can support both uh, and just you know make it a choice for the for the client yeah to be clear i'm not proposing that we close this issue i'm just proposing that we defer it because i do okay. want to revisit it again before we go 1.0 i'm just trying to look for as we start hopefully filling out these specifications what is the api that we're going to write up you know tomorrow is it REST or is it GraphQL? And I think I'm hearing more people say, let's start with, with REST. So the proposal is to do that and then revisit this later before we go 1.0. Yeah. Any objections or concerns with that proposal? Okay. No. Oh, I'm sorry. No? Okay. There's a no. Yeah, no. Okay, okay. sorry. Uh, um, okay, cool. All right, now <clears throat> I did open up some issues that I thought might be worthy of discussion, but not today because I just opened them this morning. Um, so before we jump into this SDK topic, are there any other topics related to the spec work of any specs that people want to bring up? Okay. Um, since this is an SDK topic and people may drop off, um, and feel free to do so if you want to, but let me quickly just catch some people for roll call in case they do drop off. So Drago, are you so, there? Drago, are you there? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Matthias, you there? Matthias, you there? I'm you. I'm okay. you. Okay. And there's Echo. Nick, are you there? Echo. Nick, are you there? Yes, I'm here. All right. Thank you. Uh, well, I heard Doug, are you there? The other Doug. Yeah, I'm here. All right. Grant, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. And which Grant is this? We actually have more than one Grant that has shown up. Uh, this is Grant Timmerman. Tim. Okay. Got it. Thank you. And Jim, I got anybody else I miss? All right, in that case, thank you everybody. Let's jump back to the SDK side. So I can't remember who added this, I apologize. I, sorry, I added this. Okay, Grant, do you want to lead the discussion then? Yeah, sure. Um, I do realize this could probably be in the uh, SDK meeting, but I hope it's fine here. So over the last, uh, I guess, year and a half, I've been, well, Basically, last year I've been trying to work with uh, the JavaScript SDK for uh, cloud events. Uh, as uh, at Google, we use uh, cloud events for uh, Google Cloud Functions, and we have our uh, we basically have our own. Um, we use TypeScript uh, throughout many Google open source projects. And the current SDK uh, of the uh, for JavaScript does not support TypeScript, and it also uh, uses a really weird um, object creation pattern that's sort of Java-like. That's not very JavaScripty. Um, and uh, in order to support TypeScript. Um, the library would be used to be converted to TypeScript. Um, and you can't just add 
TypeScript support on top of JavaScript. Uh, however, um, there's been some friction and I guess resistance to add TypeScript support with uh, the current, well, um, with at least uh, one maintainer of the library. And so I, I don't really understand like how to proceed from here. I guess there's two options that I listed right there. Whether um, we could say uh, we should add uh, TypeScript support, the JavaScript SDK. Um, this requires taking the JavaScript files to TypeScript files, add, adding a build walk command. You don't really have to change any of the actual source files. Another option would be to create a separate TypeScript repo. Although in the end of the day, it's all just JavaScript and you have to publish a separate NPM module. Um, I was speaking to Lance about this. Um, he said he'd be fine with going with the most popular option of the group. So I don't know if we should do it here, but um, I was looking to get a, a vote for either option one or option two. Um, what do you think, Doug, or, or anybody? Well, since I'm the one who is causing all the friction by pushing back against this proposal, um, I'll say a few things. Uh, I think that there's a, a third option, which is adding TypeScript bindings uh, to the JavaScript so that, you know, we don't have to uh, rewrite things in TypeScript uh, or create a separate repository. And in the issue that's linked here, um, I, th I hope that I was pretty clear about that. Like, I I'm not opposed to that. But when I think about what it means um, to, uh, like, what, what would be the motivation to change over to TypeScript as a whole, like, completely? That's a developer productivity thing. The end user doesn't really have any knowledge of this for the most part. Um, I, I will not be productive in TypeScript, so I'm opposed to it. Um, <laughs> that's really it. Um, I don't know that there's much more to say about it. I'm not opposed to having TypeScript bindings and having those bindings published either under definitely typed or maintaining them within the repository. Um, I am just opposed to switching everything over to TypeScript. Okay. Anybody else want to chime in? Since we were having similar issues in another SDK, Java SDK, I wanted to ask a question. How how does it work in the Cloud Advanced SDK community or group um, when there is one maintainer of a library and then the, there is controversial um, discussion and a decision has to be made. Uh, so far I've seen that the maintainer decides of, and it doesn't feel that the SDK is community driven. It's rather one person who makes the decisions, but then um, it, it, it doesn't really sound like a CNCF project then. Um, so, okay, that's a slightly different topic. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, well, sorry. well, no, it, it, it well. So let me, the, let, uh, can I ask, uh, Doug, I'm sorry to interrupt you. you I ahead. kind of wanted to uh, jump, uh, uh, sort of, not, this, not, not necessarily second to what Sergey said, but uh, rather point out to the fact that um, it is my strong belief, like I don't know much about JavaScript, right? But there's somebody who does and somebody who believes he may be more productive or somebody who believes that it will really help the community to be better. So that in and itself uh, says we need to do it. It's not a question of if, it's a question of how do we gonna approach it. And right now, for example, within the given two options, it, it appears to me that for example, option two is better because it doesn't, it, it doesn't make you, doesn't put you in a position to make a binary decision, right? But um, again, to Sergey's point, it, it's, it's really more about the fact that there's a community and community expresses certain desires, certain concerns, and 
the maintainer of the repository may not be, um, you know, of aware of all these concerns. And that's why we have these meetings. That's why we have this feedback that you're asking us about and so on and so forth. So we need to, I guess, um, listen, learn how to listen to it in a way where it's not the question of whether we need to put TypeScript support or not. It's a question of, is it requested enough? Is, is it like something that is a typical JavaScript developer would, would want, would ask for? Then let's figure out the way how to do it, not whether we have to do it or not. I mean, that's just how I look at it. Okay. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> Scott, your hands up. Howdy. Yeah, I, I was, I just wanted to say plus one on potentially a new repo for TypeScript because it does seem like a different language and it is a different pro productivity. So like personally, I, I hesitate to use TypeScript, but I would use JavaScript, but I also don't really want to block the TypeScript people from adoption. So I, for me, it makes sense to, to have two, even though it compiles down to JavaScript. Oops, sorry, I was on mute. John, your hands up. Doug, let me, let me, I, I have a personal opinion about JavaScript versus TypeScript because I think they are both irritating. Uh, <laughs> my question is, for the people who are living, living this, there's the implementer side and the consumer side. So if we take this, hey, it's a big world, let multiple implementations run and all of that, what confusion is that going to cause from the user side where they come in and say, hey, there's two equally supported um, SDKs, right, for nominally the same thing, right, the JavaScript browser ecosystem. What is that going to do? Is that we just let the market decide? Or is it, you know, what are we saying? <laughs> about that, good or bad, and how is that going to make the consumer's life easier or harder? Thank you, John. And Lance, I think your hand's up next. Actually, well, just a minute, Lance. Scott, is your hand up or is that old? I'm sorry, it's old. Okay, that's what I thought, just wanna make sure. Uh, Lance? Lance? So, um, so I, I wanna be clear, it is, I don't think it is a binary decision. Um, because you you can basically you can create type ty, ty, typescript types uh, that can be published at definitely typed or within our repository that will expose your JavaScript code um, through some typescript representation, but you don't have to write all of the the code in typescript. You just write these little types that expose that. Um, on other projects that I've worked on, this has been the way that we've handled this. Um, and I would be totally happy with that. Um, I just don't want to have to start writing TypeScript. And I don't see, like, if the end user experience is still just NPM install, and they're not actually, you know, uh, working with the code itself, then it's the, the committers, the maintainers, the developers on the SDK, who this primarily benefits. Um, and, and, you know, <laughs> uh, I get it, um, but I, and, and I said in, in the issue um, that I would stop contributing to the repository if it were converted to TypeScript. And I didn't mean that as a threat. I just mean it that, like, I don't write TypeScript. That's not what I do, and so I won't, I won't contribute to it. <laughs> so I think, Lance, you were the one that added option three down here, right? Yeah, that was me. That's what I was saying about, you know, the, you know adding TypeScript types to the repository. So I'm, <clears throat> so I'm gonna ask this question, uh, not having touched Java in years and never touching TypeScript, is option three 
viable? Can you add can you add this stuff to the existing repo without forcing someone to, to step over to TypeScript, meaning they can still do JavaScript if they want, or they can use TypeScript? Or does it actually require a separate repo to make it happen? Uh, no, it does not require a separate repo. It's, um, I mean, I can give you, I'll, I'll link an example here in a sec if the conversation. The thing is, we, we tried this option before and we literally, like the TypeScript bindings got out of sync and they were unusable. And so then we deleted them. It's, it's not something that a modern, it used to be more common, but it's uh, not the way that you can really write bindings anymore. That's a fair point. I mean, I like like I said, I don't really do TypeScript, so. Uh, so then, what's 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 wrong with option two? I mean, let's just it's a concrete option proposed by uh, Grant, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, I I mean, so from my perspective, like we have these Google modules that use cloud events, but we cannot use the cloud events SDK because it. Uh, I mean, although it's an NPM module, um, and there's various other issues of using like a builder pattern, um, we don't have any type definition or any guarantees of the code um, before execution, and that's unacceptable for like uh, if you're publishing a new module that deployed to millions of users. Um, so we really have an internal version of a cloud event SDK. And that's sort of a shame because we can't contribute to the existing one or because uh, it doesn't support TypeScript. Now, I, I wouldn't be opposed to creating a separate repo, which is something that I think will probably be the best option here. I think it'll still be a shame that we're going to have duplicated functionality um, of the node repo. Well, that, that's what I was going to ask about, because obviously option two is a, it sounds like it may be the best option based upon what you guys are saying. However, I do know that we've had some trouble in the past with getting people to participate in these SDKs because they get pulled off on other things, you know, they're busy and stuff. And I'm wondering now whether having two repos that are so similar in nature is just going to make that problem, you know, worse. Well, I mean, I'll or once there's a, a workable TypeScript SDK, I'm going to integrate that into um, at least one module which is used with serverless uh, at Google. And so it'll definitely be used and maintained. Okay. So let me ask the question, since we're almost out of time here. If we were to choose option two, in other words, create a separate repo for TypeScript, is there anybody on the call who would object or thinks that is a bad idea? Uh, to go back to what you said earlier, uh, it's not just, there's no, there, there should be no objection. It's like you said, let's try it. And then before the 2.0, there's going to be a chance to revisit it, to talk about it again and either drop it or continue with it. So. Uh, that's how I would look at it. Yeah. So, so it's definitely a yes for me. Okay. Anybody else want to speak up? I just say I think option two sounds like a good idea, and at a later point there could be a merge if it's really necessary. Yeah. Okay. It's like a it's like a spin-off. I mean, you let it run independently, and then when it gets to a certain level of maturity, you figure out whether you want to acquire it or, you know. Yep. No, I, to I totally agree. I'm just trying to follow some process here. So, yeah. um, okay, so tell you what, let me do two things here. One is I'm not hearing any objection from it. I will go ahead and create the repo for you guys. That way you're not blocked. However, from a pure process perspective, I do think we have to go back to the full working group and make sure no one broadly has any problems with it. I can't imagine they're going to, but just from a process perspective, I want to make sure that we're not treating this one any special. So. What I'll do is I'll add to next week's agenda the idea of, of making sure there was no objection um, uh, to creating the repo. And if for some reason somebody raises a good point and everybody says, hey, this is a bad idea and we vote it down, then we'll kill the repo. But um, at least in the, I don't I say that I don't think that's going to happen, but at least for the next week or so, you're not blocked and you can still make forward progress and I'll create the repo today. Does that sound fair?
Sounds good to me. Okay. Anybody have any, pro any concern with that process? Okay, cool. Excellent. In that case, any, well, I guess we're technical over time. Did I miss anybody for the agenda or for the uh, attendee list? Just want to make sure no one else joined. All right, cool. Thank you guys very much. And, and remember, we will be typing the SDK call next week, and it's going to become a weekly meeting from now on for the short term anyway. All right, thank you, everybody. Have a good week. Thanks, Doug. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.